Flying through the sky like Paramatus we soar Over the pyramids in ancient Egypt we explore Pharaohs and clouds, we're reaching for the stars Unraveling the mysteries, taking us far Egyptian vibes like King Tut's golden tomb Hieroglyphs whisper secrets in the desert they loom just want to fly with Jay. Do we and God are chasing dreams and adventures? No limit, just gotta. Pyramids shining bright under the desert sun. Adventure in the air, we're always on the run Paramotors dancing like freedom in the sky Spreading wings wide as the world passes by Wednesday got us <laughs> jamming away. <laughs> Did you like it? I love the intro. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> now I had no idea you were going to do this, Jade. So this is very, very special. <laughs> I'm glad everybody showed up. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta showed up and her internet's jamming up because she's downloading so many pictures and Deweese forgot about us. <laughs> and I was ready to put, put out an APB for her. <laughs> oh. How dare you forget about us? It was, I, I'm sorry. I thought it was Tuesday night. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, how the heck are you guys? <laughs> Good. We're good. Yeah. I'm good. I, uh, How's the weather for both of you? Yeah, I, I had a very busy few weeks just leading up to this. It's been crazy. Um, I had a lot of big things happen the last <laughs> the last few right. weeks. Um, but I finally, I finally hit submit on my final dissertation. Um, it's now all, all the requirements are complete. Everything is done. Even the, the little formatting and everything, everything that, that UCF wants from me is done. So, um, I, uh, I should still get a final thumbs up, uh, which I am told at this point is just a formality. Um, so, um, once that happens, it's official and I go attend my graduation. I will probably share some photos from the ceremony because hey, oh, that's of awesome. course. Hey. Yeah. yeah. We're part of your family too. That's <laughs> right. Absolutely. And um, yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be a nice milestone to celebrate. I'm excited about celebrating this with my son. Yep. He is 10 years old and this degree took me almost eight years to complete. So he does not even know what it's like to have all of my attention and all of my time which yeah, i know that most of his life <laughs> exactly most of his life i have been busy doing a full-time job and and in grad school and and juggling a lot so uh i'm excited to celebrate this with him especially and to um hopefully help him see um the the fun the light at the end of the tunnel you know the celebration part of all the hard work and um, uh, because I don't think you will really get a, a lot of impact from the the benefits that people get from graduate school, like, you know, better jobs and something like, something like that. He's not going to see a lot of that. Um, he's not going to be able to wrap his head around that, you know, like career opportunities and, and things like that. But he will definitely be able to wrap his head around a nice ceremony, a celebration, a good family gathering and, um, 
And this is why I'm very appreciative of everybody who's been sending correct congratulations because I can share these things with him and he will appreciate them. All right, definitely. Yeah. I, I can't believe, I mean, I bet it's just a big weight off your shoulders. I still can't believe it either. It's been it's been a very long time and a very heavy weight. And I have to say that that flying, um, the, the actual act of flying, and also the community along the way have been very important um, mm -hmm. in kind of getting me through all of this. So um, I'm very appreciative of all of this. I'm very glad to be on the other side of it. And um, um, and I'm happy with all the things that I've done along the way that kind of, I don't know. I feel like a different person on I this bet. side. So how much other. of a change has this made in your professional life? Well, um, right now the change is not, um, the, obviously everything will happen after I actually have the, the degree in hand, which is going to happen after, after the semester. But um, my title will change from associate instructor to uh, associate lecturer. Um, which is just a notch up. It means that I have a terminal degree. I'm done with all the education that there is to do. <laughs> um, I will continue with my current um, job with the University of Central Florida because I love it. Um, I love my students and um, I will be able to teach uh, graduate classes now. Um, so I'm looking forward to teaching in the master's program and in, uh, in our major and um, um, just enjoying having that level of uh, being involved in that level of education that has impact on people who are already involved in the workplace. With master students, you usually get a, a nice mixed bag of people with prior experience and, and people who are new to uh, um, and early in their career as well. So um, I'm excited about that. Uh, just teaching a new type of student. Uh, population and uh, possibly new topics um, and um, there will be a little bit of money uh, added to my salary not a huge amount at UCF unfortunately it could have could have been nicer <laughs> um, but you know if if I if I wanted more money I, I could change jobs and and look for opportunities elsewhere but Central Florida, I'm pretty embedded in Central Florida at this point. I have my friends, my family, my community, my, my LZs. I don't want to <laughs> have to start all over again somewhere else. <laughs> so um, I like it here. And um, and I think it's it's worth it to stay with, you know, the, the community that you already built. Um, that's worth something. And I think it's worth more than money in my eyes. I think my son and I definitely have something good going on here. And I don't want to. Just don't want to change that lifestyle too much. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. there are ways to, uh, to um, you know, if, if it's money that I'm after, there are ways to make more money within my job. Maybe I'll start teaching summers instead of taking them off every year. That would be nice, right? <laughs> but I like I like my free time. That's that's what I do all my flying in the summer. So, yeah. so I, I, uh, I'm hanging on to that. And, and I'm accepting the fact that it may not be a lot of money added, you know, like a lot of extra money, but but there will be still a lot of time and um, just different type of work within my job. And my students get to call me doctor now, so I'm I'm going to make them do that from now on. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. I'm seeing congratulations in the chat. Thank you all so much. Yeah. All right, Deweese, you got that camper pack to head north yet? It's getting there slowly but surely. Randy's putting new locks on it right now for the um, to change the locks out that you know everybody's got a key to, you know. So he's changing those out right now. Okay. And uh, I'm getting ready to order some keypads for the doors and got a few things to pack, and it won't be long. Okay. <laughs> Nothing new Where up are here. You heading? We're gonna go to Wisconsin for. Uh, part of the summer, a couple months. Right here. Up to Jade's again. Nice. And I promised her I'm not going to the hospital for more than half please the time. Don't. This year. No, please don't. <laughs> yeah, we'll go to Jade's and for, and then we'll go to Oshkosh. 
um, while we're up there. And then maybe over to Aurora PPG after that. And we'll see. We'll do a little tooling around the country for a little while. So, so both of you are going to be at Oshkosh this year? Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know. Oshkosh is sounding very tempting all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We went last year. We had a good time. We had a really nice time. Yeah. So I was at Sun on Fun last weekend. Uh-huh. How'd that go? Oh, it was so nice. It was yeah. so nice. Now, it's it's not as big as Oshkosh, which means there is less walking. I think someone said that. I can't remember who, but someone. I think hey, it was yes, Wendy. Yeah. Wendy said that. Wendy. Yes. So Wendy said it's it's like Oshkosh, but smaller, so you don't have to do a lot of walking, yeah. which I appreciate because I was exhausted at the end of every day. <laughs> but I um, I got to represent Aurora PPG. Um, uh, Good. So- had a wonderful tent set up with banners, uh, with I pictures of members. It was wonderful. And um, of course, she had everything set up. She did such a wonderful job uh, preparing for this. And uh, I was able to talk about Aurora's mission and meet a lot of wonderful uh, women who are either already innovation or new to it and, and not really sure where to start. And, you know, concerned about the cost of getting into aviation um, and all of that. And we, of course, delivered the news to them about the most affordable and most accessible way to get in the air through paramotor. So that was really nice just to see the impact and to see people kind of like their their faces light up when they hear the news. Um, And of course, with Aurora's mission being a community, um, a support system, a source of scholarships even, it was really nice to, to have this conversation with people. Um, I was talking to Susan and about how when people approached our tent, at first they were a little apprehensive. And, and mm-hmm. sometimes people would even come over and say, so what are you selling? You know, <laughs> and, um, and it was really nice to just say, we don't sell anything. We just, just connect you. <laughs> exactly. We'll even give you money once we can once we have enough money to get those scholarships out. But but it was so wonderful to just kind of you know um, quickly uh, turn the conversation into a more inviting one. We're not selling anything. We're going to connect you with resources. We're going to even provide resources um, and um, and help you get started in the in this wonderful sport. So uh, it was lovely, and I think the highlight of. Uh, well, okay, I, I'm going to say there were two highlights of Sun and Fun. So I'm going to give Sun and Fun one, one highlight, credit for one highlight. The fireworks show was incredible. <laughs> who, who did the, uh, I, the drone I, show? Do you know um, who did the drones? I cannot remember the name of the, um, the group that did that. Um, but I, I'm sure if I look through my videos, I can probably locate it. Um, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll, that was pretty neat. the best thing That's about it was it was not just the, it was it was it was everything. So the fireworks, I mean, I've seen a lot of fireworks. I live in central Florida. All the parks are here. I've seen fireworks shows, plenty of them. But um, this was in, very impressive fireworks and pyrotechnics. There were like things on the in the sky, things on the ground, fire everywhere. <laughs> but there was also an airplane flying through the fireworks, shooting fireworks out of its wings. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to the drones and lasers, so it was like it was everything. There, they left nothing behind. Everything, everything was in that show. Ooh. Oh, thanks, One Wheel. One yes. Wheel Grandma says it's, it was done by Great Lakes. Great Lakes. Thank you. And they did an amazing job. Yeah. So uh, definitely, um, so yeah, Bonnie's talking about the fireworks in, in Oshkosh. I guess oh, I'll have to go and see them because the bar is really, really high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and then the, the, the other highlight, the highlight that I thought of first, actually, was um, um, Saturday afternoon, the paramotor flying session in Paradise City, when there were more female paramotor pilots on the field than men. There were only oh, two. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. 
I was oh, girl power. <laughs> I was blown away. Um, Sandy was there. Of course, Sandy was was volunteering with Sun and Fun as well. She has been doing an amazing job representing the sport in in so many avenues. Um, mm -hmm. Jillian was there, and of course, just having you know Jillian's just showcase of of paramotor skills. Just it's it's incredible just watching her fly. And same what goes to um, Rain. She was wonderful. Um, just all the takeoffs were so graceful and with the foot drags and everything, they really put all the bells and whistles in their technique. But it was not only the foot launch um, uh, female pilots that were represented because Wendy was there with her trike and of course flawless, beautiful, just brought that wing up in the air, slowed down and controlled it, a nice long taxi and then took off. I, I just, it was incredible. And the cherry on top, the absolute cherry on top, was Kylie O'Connor, 14 years old, 14 year old Kylie O'Connor. We had her on the yep. show, I remember. Yep. She did a beautiful takeoff and a beautiful landing. And I just, I had goosebumps watching the whole thing. And it was just incredible having having so many female pilots on the field, literally more female pilots than, than, than the men. And um, it was such a beautiful day for the sport in general because everyone had a beautiful flight. Everyone flew very safe and represented the sport well. But at the same time, girl power. <laughs> it was just, it was everything. It was everything. Um, yeah, and Arrhythmia, they were there? Oh, oh yes. I mean, obviously. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> they were there. Arrhythmia, yeah. and yeah, of course. So Arrhythmia did a wonderful job. They they had the, um, the um, they, they did their show, their demo, um, after sunset. So... Mm -hmm. uh, so they also had the pyrotechnics, and um, um, it was it was such a nice just demonstration of the the capabilities of the pilots in our sport. Just um, um, and, and I was very lucky. I got to sit right behind uh, where they were setting up. So I I was actually watching them prepare the whole time, and I was just sitting there like so ready to watch them go. And then um, and then as soon as it was dark enough. They all lit up their um, their LED lights on their hoops, and you could see just the the, the little you know little Cheerios in the dark. <laughs> it was so beautiful. And then their takeoffs, just one after the other, just those beautiful takeoffs. And of course, they're all fantastic pilots. So um, just watching their technique, the 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 consistency in their flying, and uh, I mean they they are flying up there on on flexible wings with fire shooting out of their, I don't know, feet. I don't know where the, the fireworks come from, but it was, I think I actually saw like a, the, the, I don't know, the parts that, that shoot the fireworks attached to the bottom of their motors, um, if I'm not mistaken. I would love to have them explain to us how they actually set it up because that was really, um, that was really incredible. And, uh, and a pretty, you know, they are pretty high risk things to do for flexible wings. So so it requires precision. They have to always keep track of where they are from each other. And and, uh, and um, they did such a wonderful job. So um, it's it's always very nice to see the sport so well represented. And of course, I mean, I may be biased because that's all I look for, <laughs> but um, but it was, uh, it was a very good event. Of course, their 50th anniversary. So such a big deal. And they put a lot of time and effort into preparing for it and um i know i know some of the volunteers personally so so i know that they they have been preparing for this for a while um but it was very nice to see more people aware of ppg and um uh, more people showing up at paradise city and more people asking questions and looking to get into the sport so um yeah i think it was a good event in general but also a really good event for for ppg yeah. To me, it's really good to see that paramotors are really getting to be recognized a lot more. It used to be nobody knew what a paramotor was, you know. Yeah, that is true, but it's it's definitely changing. And I think it's it's probably due to the efforts of, you know, groups like Arrhythmia and, and all the fantastic schools, especially that, you know, in Florida, we have a lot of paramotor schools and, and they're all very good. So... I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to generalize. Of course, someone will always have different opinions and, 
and um, it's you know it's it's a sport with a lot of people in it. So, um, but we do have a lot of fantastic schools in Florida. So, so an event like that happening in our backyard is just a great opportunity for all these accomplished schools to come and showcase their talent and um, and show off the sport. So, so yeah, and it, it, I think uh, I think the the coolest person that I ran into was actually one of the volunteers, and he said that. I, uh, I talked to him for a little bit and he said that he has been volunteering to help with Sun and Fun for 35 years now. And what, then, year, was, what year was this for the Sun and Fun? 50? 50. 50. Okay. So I was blown away. And then I asked him what type of aviation he did back then or, or now, or like what type of aviation interest him, interested him the most. And he talked about powered parachute. And uh, I was surprised because you know, and he still was involved in in in, P, in PPC for for 35 years. He must have been one of the first people that that got into that um, in, in in that sport while it was pretty much brand new. So um, so that was really interesting to see a little bit was, of that. Was he one of the announcers? No, actually, he was driving one of the the little golf carts, helping helping the guests um, go from one place to another. So, um, yeah, there were a lot of really interesting uh, people driving those golf carts. I always made it a point to actually ask their stories and and um, and chat with them a little bit. So um, it was very nice, and of course, just catch up with all the friends and and. Uh, everyone that I uh, that I hadn't seen in so long. So it was very nice. It was, it was definitely very special. Susan, Susan's saying we even got Melinda to try on a PPG? Yes, yes, that happened. <laughs> who, who, Melinda, who's Melinda? Um, so um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what, uh, what her last name is, um, but I think, I think it's the same Melinda that uh, JJ were talking about last week for um 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 we were talking about sectional charts oh uh, i think so oh melinda bliss yeah. so maybe, yeah that applies to susan. maybe susan can confirm cool. but yeah there were a lot she applies of the ppcs and trains there was definitely a lot of, yep. So yeah, Susan says yes, Melinda Bliss. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was wonderful. A lot of interest um, from uh, male and female pilots, uh, people transitioning from um, uh, free flight. Um, and of course I was able to run around and just connect them with all the schools there, introduce them to people and, and let them know, you know, who's the closest in their area with all the schools being represented there. It was really nice to just like go around and, and connect people, which is what I love to do the most. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like at um, Oshkosh last year, you know, everybody was kind of hesitant to walk up to the US PPA um, table because they thought we were selling stuff. And it's like, nope, we just want to tell you what we're about, you know, and, um, and then we'd ask where they were from and, you know, we would try to give them the closest um, instructors that we knew of that were near them and told them how they can look, um, look that up. So we tried to do that same thing also. So awesome. Yeah, yeah it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely a good thing to do that. I mean, flying is fun, but also taking the time to help uh, connect people and, and do all of that. Like I am, I, I didn't even bring my gear to Sun and Fun this year because I had a lot of stuff in, in my camper and it's a small camper and I didn't have room for my gear. And it was like, hmm, my son's bike or my paramotor. So I figured I'll, I'll probably be a social butterfly. <laughs> That's all the flying I'm gonna do. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I, I still had a great time, but I sure wanted to be on the field when all the girls were, were flying. I, that was the time when I was like, I was kicking yeah. myself in my gear there. But hopefully we'll make it up in bad apples. We'll be there. So uh, that's the plan. Yeah. So nature's best. He's asking um, any plans to interview Alexis now that she's the USPPA president. 
We could do that um, if I could get her from being so busy. Um, um, I know I've talked to her in the past about it and stuff. So but she was in transition from Lone Star up to Michigan and or Wisconsin to Michigan, back down to Florida and back and forth. So I know she's a busy girl. So we can try to get her on sometime. Yeah, I'd love to uh, get on her calendar. This would be really nice. I would love to hear because um, she has done so much um, as part of the um, USPPA board in the past as vice president, but I'm sure she can um, share with us some of the plans and the things that are coming up in the future and how you know everyone can help um, yep. in different ways. Otherwise, um, I can try to pin her down at uh, EAA and try to just you know, we're trying to do a show um, that night if we've got decent Wi-Fi, I'll make her come over for a couple minutes um, before the air show or the fireworks and stuff and make her come on and we can ask her some questions. So see if we can get her to do that. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. So, all right. All right. Well, the only thing new with me and at our end here is no more snow and we've got five baby chickens, uh, flamingos. Five baby flamingos. <laughs> oh, oh, so are they flamingos, like honorary flamingos, or are they real yeah. flamingos? Honorary, honorary flamingos. Okay, yeah. all right. Because that would be so cool <laughs> if you actually had baby flamingos. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, all right, <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to visit for real. <laughs> what are the names? I don't know. I'm waiting for you to come up here and name oh, them. Because <laughs> right now they're hiding under the little the brooder heater and there's two dark ones and three yellow ones. <laughs> They'll be half grown by the time I get there. I know <laughs> they're waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> so when you come in the driveway, we're going to be all like in a little line. They're going to be following me because I'm going to have them all tame this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, Jade, are you going to do the spinny wheel today? Um, I've already done Done, done it once. So you guys got to pay attention. Oh okay. yeah, pay attention. Oh, so it's not, it's not a, an actual spin, uh, or is it a spinny wheel? No, nope. we're gonna... we're doing the, the where I flash a something up yeah. on the screen. Because trying that thinking, one for a little bit. I was thinking, um, well, whatever it is that you do, um, Susan, you're right. <laughs> maybe, maybe the prize will be to get one of the chicks uh, uh, named after the winner. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would compete for that. I would participate to get, <laughs> to get yeah. one, of, one of the chicks named after me. <laughs> and Daniel says, thanks for doing what you guys do. What are you talking to us? <laughs> we jibber jabber. <laughs> He's probably, Shane, he's probably talking about and Shane, yeah. he, must he must be related to Travis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ha ha ha. All right. So um hi Walter. Walter. Let's say hi to everybody first in here. Yeah. So let's just take turns. I got Walter. I got Bill H. I got Kramer. I got Scuba. I got Fly Baby Fly. I got Shane's Planet Shane. And I got Daniel. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered that. Sorry, sir. Uh, Thanks for joining I've got us. Travis DuPont. One Wheel Grandma. Woohoo! I got Jeremy from Michigan. Uh, I have nature's best. <clears throat> Two feet on a heartbeat. I've got the husband, Eric <laughs> PPG Lear. I got Linda Anderson. Hey, girl. Uh, I got Bonnie, Bonnie Friends. Um, did we say fly, baby, fly, Jordan? Yep. Oh, we did already? Yep. Oh, um, 
Um, is that it? Uh, no, we got a trainer, equine trainer. Oh, that's Kat from Texas. Okay. Um, well, um, I got someone who's not in the chat. Yeah. I just <laughs> got a text message from Ryan O'Connor letting me know that Kylie's watching us right now. So, hey, Kylie. Hi, Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Joe Adele. Hi, Joe. And I know my, possibly my parents, they're back from Arizona. They're trying to get their TV hooked up. I know Brandy's probably watching. Oh, and there's also probably Equine watching trainer. out in Washington State. Is that cat equine trainer? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Joseph Sibley. Oh, yeah. Joe, did you make it to Wisconsin? They were heading to Wisconsin starting today. Oh. So. Did we say Bonnie? Yes. Oh, and oh. Bonnie. Yep. Bonnie. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks guys for. Oh, John out. Wayne. Did. John Wayne. How did we forget John Wayne? We, we couldn't forget John Wayne. He's here. Especially with Bill H. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a, a set. If you filled the spinny wheel with names, it would be easy. What is he saying? Easy to say everyone. Well, we're not doing it that way. So, so just pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> you got to pay attention to the screen. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure Randy Milstead's watching somewhere. Yeah. I think he's outside watching. Oh, all right. So, are you ready to hit it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, let's see. Let's do I... it. I'm so excited to share um, uh, some of the... Tell us um, from the get-go how many people went, what they had to pay, and how you guys got there. Start yes. from that. Yes. So um, let's start from... Um, um, the, the, the whole thing started with... Um, Obviously, I, I I was born in Egypt, right? So I'm gonna start from there. I was born in Egypt. <laughs> you guys have time, right? <laughs> you King Tut's daughter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just a relative. Great, 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 great grandpa. But you know, close enough. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I um, I've actually I, I grew up flying in in, in Egypt, uh, small airplanes. My dad was a flight instructor. Um, and we, we were kind of always involved in aviation. So um, I, um, uh, I wanted to organize something for um, some of my friends and, and you know, show them Egypt the way I, I know it, the way I've seen it. So I didn't want to do the tourist experience. I actually wanted to, of course, you know, there's a lot to see as a tourist in Egypt, but I didn't want it to be something that is very like just pure tourism where we just get handed over to a, to an agency and we just kind of hit the, the sites and all of that. So, uh, but I also wanted it to be a paramotor adventure. So, um, oh, thanks, Susan. <laughs> uh, fun fact, Kevin speaks Arabic. Um, Susan's husband, Kevin, speaks Arabic. So that's something I discovered in Sun and Fun, which is very, very cool. But anyway, um, so um, anyway, I, I started uh, kind of checking with my contacts because I wanted to also make this uh, a paramotor adventure. So I ended up getting recommendations for a particular uh, school, a paramotor school in Egypt called Sky Sports Egypt. And um, everyone in my contacts recommended them. I did my research. I asked some of my friends who have um, gone to Egypt before um, uh, with them and with other um, um, organizations as well. And I got a lot of recommendations for Sky Sports Egypt. Um, and I also saw this really cool series of three videos that Emilia Plack made of her trip to Egypt with Leah Catullo and Johnson Q and, and some other people um, that they had in the same trip. They actually went to Egypt and they did, you know, they flew the pyramids and, and other destinations with Sky Sports Egypt. So I 
I, I, I got a good vibe. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, um, I would like to plan a trip and uh, I would like your help to make sure that we, we get the permits secured um, and everything. And I actually uh, talked to them about the, the timing and, and I, you know, like I discussed the time with them the group that was going and we picked the time that worked for everyone. So it was pretty much a very customized trip that we, um, we actually put together. And um, um, the, the primary locations that we wanted to go to were obviously the pyramids, everybody wants to do that. And um, those are actually the, the trickiest to secure because you actually reserve access to the pyramids. So, so you, um, there is a big part of the actual Giza plateau that is yours for that day and um to ensure that we get opportunities because you know you never know what the weather is going to be like you don't just reserve one day you actually reserve several days and and sky sports egypt made sure to reserve three days for us to make sure that we get a good window um and we also wanted to go to luxor and then i just let them choose whatever other destinations they would like to add and um they um uh, they made suggestions and and we picked a few things and then when we actually got there um, it was incredible how resilient they were um, things did deviate from the plan because of weather because obviously you expect that but we got a fantastic day of flying at the pyramids the first day was the first day was phenomenal the second day the weather, the weather was not great um, so they the, the effort they went through, they bent over backwards to make sure that we get a good uh, experience. Um, they ended up um, swapping permit days to make sure that we get an extra day. So we ended up actually having, um, instead of the three days that we were promised, we had a four day window to fly the pyramids because they wanted to make sure we get um, we got a second session in um, of flying in the pyramids. So it was phenomenal. And with that gap, while the weather was bad at the, at the pyramids, we actually were taken to a surprise trip that was not in the original schedule. We were taken to um, a spot in the Red Sea and, um, and they threw an access to a zip line park. So we actually zip lined across mountains and they, uh, they made us dinner, they grilled chicken there. Um, like they, we actually just like all sat around the fire and, and, and the grill and, and then it rained and it was, it was such a fantastic adventure. Like all the fun things that you can expect in, a, in an adventure happened. Um, we were a group, um, all of us together were, um, were 15 and uh, we, we moved together in this small pod um, of people. Um, we, uh, we, had, we had a couple of people join later. So like overall, I would say we were somewhere between 11 and 15 by the time that you, know, you uh, come for everyone. And um, uh, the group was fantastic. We had pilots from the US. Um, I, my network is pretty expensive, right? And, uh, and then we actually, after I, I kind of made plans with, with the school there, we had a couple of people cancel on us. So that's why I had to kind of spread the net a little wider to make sure that the school gets, you know, they, they get to, you know, break even. Um, and I didn't want to affect them financially. So, uh, so I advertised the trip a little bit, which was my first time advertising a trip because that was not my plan. It was like something that I was doing for my friends, but then it kind of escalated and I had to advertise a few spots. Um, so we ended up with uh, my, my friends, my core group, and a couple of additional pilots that, um, that were, um, um, that showed interest in um, just over the internet when I mentioned the trip a couple of times, they, they decided to join. Um, so we had people from the US, um, we had uh, people from France, and uh, people from uh, Spain. So uh, it was a very, very nice group. Um, so uh, um, after that little trip uh, to the Red Sea, we came back to uh, Cairo again, and we did that extra day of flying over the pyramids. And then we flew all the way to Luxor, um, and um, we ended up uh, flying uh, for about three days in Luxor. Um, I think maybe I should show pictures while I'm talking about all these things, right? Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is actually, all of this is in Luxor. And you will see that we did, we flew, that LZ that you saw in the first uh, couple of shots of this video, 
uh, this LZ right here is on an island in the Nile. And um, this is Pilar. Pilar is, is a Spanish paragliding pilot. And um, uh, you can see Bucker, the, um, uh, the main organizer of the trip um, in this video, Ahmed Bucker, Captain Ahmed Bucker. Uh, so we did a uh, hot air balloon ride over Luxor, over the Valley of the Kings. Um, so you can see this is the LZ right here. We take off from this LZ and we head straight across the Nile. We gain altitude and then we cross the Nile. That's where the Valley of the Kings is located. So we, we fly over the Valley of the Kings, uh, the Hatshepsut Temple, and then you cross the Nile again, gain altitude and cross the Nile. And you um, and you fly over the temples in, um, in Luxor, the Luxor Temple, the Karnak Temple. So I want to tell a little story about uh, uh, Pilar. Uh, Pilar Montero is actually a very, very accomplished paragliding pilot from Spain. She actually just won a, a spot landing competition last week. She's a fantastic paragliding pilot, but she had never flown a paramotor. The group, because the group was very small, um, and that's when I say 10 to uh, uh, 11 to 15, that includes the pilots and their guests. So it's not all paramotor pilots. We also had um, um, several of their family members and friends. Um, and um, uh, that allowed us to um, have a lot of attention for every one person. So the, the school, and because the host, Sky Sports Egypt, is actually a school, they provided a lot of attention, a lot of care to every person as they were taken off. So we had people helping us with setting up our wings if needed, um, people carrying our motors and getting them you know, closer to where we set up our wings. Uh, we had uh, people um, you know, helping with all the details, pre-flight, whatever we needed to do, they were there. And um, for Pilar Montero, she has obviously a lot of good experience with controlling gliders and all of that. So, um, when on the first day, uh, Captain Ahmed Bucker, he started, uh, you know, just kind of slowly gauging her interest. And she said that she was interesting, interested in trying paramotors one day. So he said, okay, try this engine on. And um, she put a paramotor on her back. At first she said, oh, it's so heavy. And then she started giving it power. And she said, oh, this is, this is so scary. It's a lot of power. And then, you know, a few minutes later, she's like, yeah, yeah, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. And um, he did that with her. He got her to try to, you know, put the motor on her back and get the glider in the air a couple of times. And he was like, she, she looks ready. So he said, this afternoon, if you want to fly, come to the LZ. Now, the, the hotel that we were staying at in Luxor is actually on that island where the LZ is. So it was so easy for us, you know, just was sightseeing, you know, like in the middle of the day. And then she ran over. Um, we actually got hopped in the same shopping, no, shopping in the same golf cart <laughs> and just like drove over to the LZ and uh, and, uh, and she was so happy. She was just screaming, running all the way to the to the LZ. And she did it. She got her first flight in Luxor um, with Captain Bucker on the radio. And I was just blown away by the amount of support. So so he got he gave her the gift of her first solo on a paramotor in three days with prior experience and um um and 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 he got her in the air wow so, so a I, bunch of people are inquiring about um pilots renting gear from sky sports or did they haul it over like you did yes so i'm actually i'm the only person that brought a motor everybody else um actually i take it back we did have um so um the pilots from spain uh, they were the latest to sign up for the trip. So, um, but everybody else uh, rented motors. So motors were available for rent. And um, I would say only one of the motors uh, needed a bit of work um, on site, but, they, uh, but the rest of them were, were in pretty good shape. Um, and um, uh, the pilots who brought their motors, they also had you know, the support of um, um, everybody there, the school. They help them with, uh, obviously, the school provides uh, transportation of the motors on the ground. So once you, those who brought their motors, once you get those motors in the country, the school takes over handling 
transportation, <coughs> making sure that they the, the mobile uh, followed us from Cairo to Luxor because we don't put them on the airplanes um, in like for internal transportation unless it's needed. Um, so there's actually ground transportation. So there was, while we were doing the sightseeing and taking a day off from flying, the team was transporting our gear to the next destination and then we would fly to that next destination so it's not you know, too much driving for us. Uh, we were totally pampered. Um, the, um, 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 after Luxor, we went back to Cairo and um, there were some of the pilots with us who left uh, immediately after Luxor like straight from Cairo, they um, they were given a final day, a final evening at the hotel so they could at least go and take showers and have dinner and then rest at the hotel for a couple of hours before they took their flight. Um, but the rest of us actually continued to uh, the north coast of Egypt where we made a stop at um, in Alexandria, um, the fantastic city that was founded by Alexander the Great so much history and it was incredible to see the 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 art um the in in the different monuments how the the style went from egyptian to greek but like not abruptly there was like a lot a good transition of the the two styles blending before you could actually um before you could actually see the greek influence so it was very nice we went to the alexander through catacombs, uh, we visited uh, the citadel in Alexandria, which was built um, um, on the spot where the the the, the lighthouse, the, the seven wonders of the world <laughs> lighthouse was in, was on, and and um, some of the the building blocks of the of that lighthouse were, were actually used in the citadel. So it was a phenomenal experience. We also did some flying on the beach in the north coast. Um, the North Coast was not even, and Alexandria, we're not even in the original plan, but because we ended up going early to that Red Sea leg, so um, Sky Sports Egypt decided to replace that last leg with the North Coast so that people get a new destination. They don't just go back to the same place. So um, it, it was incredible how um, resilient and flexible and, and just um, very attentive to um, our experience they were. So um, I think they did a wonderful job. Um, and as far as like, so that's that's like the, the travel and the flying part, um, but the little details that they put attention, they paid attention to, we, ha we had um, um, uh, security personnel um, on the bus. And of course the bus was only a small van because we were not a big group. Um, so we had actually security personnel with us on every, where we went. Um, they threw in a lot of little adventures. They took us um, to um, Old Cairo an evening, and it was just, they treated us to everything. We had like traditional edition snacks and drinks on, in a, like a roadside cafe. It was just, it was an amazing experience. So, How many days were you there? Oh my goodness, it, it feels like a month, but it was, um, was it 12 days? I think it was 12 days. We packed so much in, in just that. Um, and I, I want to share something that I know Jade has been has been sharing videos. Um, I got a tandem flight with the, the one and, all, and only Captain Ahmed Bakr himself uh, the last day at the North Coast on the beach. <laughs> I had taken the prop off of my motor and then I couldn't find it. <laughs> and uh, um, um, it, sorry, not the I, not the prop. I could I could find I knew where the prop was, but I could not remember where I put the prop bolts. Um, I had removed the prop for transportation. I couldn't remember where I put the prop bolts. Of course, they were in the pocket in the harness pocket, but I just didn't think of that at the time. I was so just I was so tired. Um, um, so um, so I was like I was on the beach beautiful weather for flying and I didn't have my motor and I was like, so how about a tandem? <laughs> and uh, it was just, he took me up and we did some spirals over the water. The water was beautiful. It was just the sand was so white and the water was so blue. Everything was just, just visually stunning. It's just such a beautiful country. There's so much, 
you know, between the the, the history and the, just the nature and and uh, I I loved running around dinner tables every evening and telling people what to try. I would just go around the buffet and and find the best things that they did that night. And I was like, all right, you should try this and that. And that was like, I go like pick up all the little desserts that I like and just put it in front of people's, you know, and, and on the table in front of people so they can try them. So I personally loved the experience of sharing my home country with people. It was not, it was not just the, you know, just the the trip itself and, and all those things, but I I felt so much pride in doing this, um, and um, and I actually enjoyed it. it. was It was a lot of work making sure everybody's happy, and I felt very responsible, even though, you know, officially Sky Sports Egypt was the host, but I I felt responsibility in making sure everyone has a good experience because it's Egypt, you know, um, of course because I spoke the language and I felt that I. I I could help people. I could make everybody's experience even better um, if I make sure that they don't have to, uh, you know, um, struggle with the communication or anything. So um, so it was it was a very it was a very good experience for me as well um, as a kind of semi host, I guess. So I I think I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. Ooh, we have someone in the chat that I would like to highlight over here okay so uh charles chavis uh is my very 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 good friend chip he is family he is uh, my son's godfather actually um oh. and he he was there with us on this trip and oh, uh, <laughs> that little thing that he's saying yeah ramadan <laughs> is from a song um that so we were there during the month of ramadan so basically during egypt's holiday season so you know holiday music on repeat all of those songs same thing <laughs> so that particular song stuck in was stuck in his head and uh, and everybody's heads at that point like everybody was just going around saying yeah ramadan <laughs> so uh, so it was a lot of fun it was very special to be there during Ramadan because um, there there are special foods that that are made and served and and you know street decorations and uh, crazy nightlife. Everybody's just up all night. So, uh, if, so I, if got it, a, I got a go question. So, how much did it cost for that group to go, each person individually, so and renting I'm, renting gear? Yes. So obviously the cost. Uh, varies um, over time because um, uh, mm -hmm. a big part of the cost is the permits and fees that are required by the government. So it's um, it's not easy to kind of say that this is the same the same cost that we can expect in the future. But um, and I also I did some negotiating because I when I talked to them I said those are my friends we're going to take good care of them. So um, the um, the trips. I'm looking at my notes here to make sure I'm not making things up. Um, the trip the way it was organized, it was actually uh, three different itineraries. So people were interested in flying only um, in, in um, Giza, so over the pyramids. Um, the cost for that uh, was... Um, sorry, my internet is a little slow. I should have had that open. I didn't actually right. think that we were going to do talk numbers, but um, I believe it was um, eighteen hundred for um, uh, just the Cairo and our original plan included a visit to Fayum Oasis, but the weather was bad there, and we replaced it with that um, with that short trip to the Red Sea early on. Okay. Um, so 18, am I choppy? Am I cutting out? No, you're all right. Okay. So, so for, for pilots, it was 1800 for, um, the, the pyramids and Fayum and, um, and 1000 for, for guests. So non-pilots, they only paid 1000 and then they, um, they had access to tandem flights, 
um, if they wanted. Um, and I am looking at this. Okay. And then if you add the um, if you added the the Luxor trip, so basically um, all, all of Giza, including that little trip to the Red Sea, and then Luxor, that was twenty seven hundred for pilots and seventeen hundred for uh, the guests. And uh, and then if you added the full uh, the the last leg, which originally was supposed to be a stay in the Red Sea, but then everybody got that at the beginning, so so it was replaced with a visit to the north coast. Um, so that was uh, um, that was a twelve day trip, and I'm looking at my notes now, so it is correct. It's twelve days, mm -hmm. and that was uh, thirty three thirty three hundred for pilots and twenty one hundred for guests. <clears throat> Now those those prices, um, I I did quite a bit of negotiating uh, up front, and um, and I locked down prices based on some of the fees that were um, that were applicable to last year. Uh, locked them down because I started the negotiation early, um, and they honored them even though some of the fees and permits um, kind of changed over time. But they honored these costs, and uh, um, and for the motors. The good thing about um, about this trip is that they actually uh, charged the um, the the cost of motors based on actual usage. So so it wasn't a flat rate. You rent a motor and it's locked for like you have to pay for the entire trip because you never know how much usage you're actually going to get of those motors. So um, so everyone kind of paid a different amount depending on how much they actually chose to use those motors. And there were also different rates for whether you wanted exclusive access to that motor if you were, or if you were willing to share it with other pilots. So uh, they did a really good job. In general, um, I would say like, on, you can say that on average, uh, if you wanted exclusive access to a motor for an entire day, it was about $200. Uh, but you know, if if you had your fill of flying over the pyramids on that first day, you didn't have to. You were not stuck paying for that motor uh, every day if you chose to not fly. Um, and they also had, uh, you know, a system for if you're going to share the motor, then then the rate gets split across pilots and things like that. So um, so people actually got a lot of time and uh, access to motors. At at the end of the trip, some of the pilots were even you know, saying, all right, like I had my fill, I'm good. And they didn't feel like they had to use the motor because because they paid for it or anything. So that was something that I really liked about the way they structured uh, the, the trip for us. Uh, I didn't feel like like I was stuck paying for a motor that I'm not using. And of course, you know, with the weather being unpredictable, that was, that was a big thing. Um, and a lot of the pilots that were going on this trip uh, they had these concerns. They they were concerned about you know like like do I rent a motor and then what happens if I don't fly? So right. so they took care of that and and it was not a concern. Everybody, um, like I don't know. I've I've even seen them. I've seen them do such a great job of being fair. You know, like no one felt that they were taking advantage of and and everybody was so happy. Um, so I want to give a little shout out. Speaking of people being happy, <laughs> uh, I want to give a little shout out to one of the very special guests who were on this trip uh, with us. Um, someone that a lot of people in our community know, uh, Marty Hathaway, uh, the yeah. master <laughs> um, props and and, uh, and cooling shrouds and <laughs> the artist himself. He actually was on this trip. And he made something very special um, as a gift to uh, the host, to Captain Bucker. So I wanted to look it up. Better not quick. be a yep. King Tut flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not able to. Let me see why it's not opening real quick. Oh. 
right. Luis, can you go to the USPPA page yep. for me? I can't seem to get onto it. And go to the events. Yeah. Um, Chris Crystal wanted me last week to mention um, if anybody's interested in going to uh, the, their fly-in. And it's, oh gosh, oh gosh. That's a dot .org, isn't it? Yes. All right, I have it. Let okay. me see. I'm going to try to share my screen. Corn hmm. buzzards. Corn buzzards. Um, How do I share down in Palmyra, Illinois, um, Memorial Weekend. So if anybody is interested in that, um, to hit him up. Can I get into that without logging in? You can go ahead. Oh, so can you guys see the picture I'm sharing? Yep, I'm going to try to zoom in on it here. It's the best I can do. Yeah. This is a beautiful cooling shroud that uh, Marty Hathaway made uh, for um, uh, Captain Bucker, our host with Sky Sports Egypt, as a thank you for. Uh, for his hospitality. So uh, shout out to the artist, Marty Hathaway. Beautiful yeah, cooling shroud awesome. here, customized with it. Yeah. Um, and um, um, I want to also, I guess, add that uh, Sky Sports Egypt has um, events coming up. I will go back uh, with them I am looking into November um, around the Thanksgiving break, but they also have events coming up in October and in December. So, um, uh, and I will be sharing more information on that in Bad Apples. So uh, if you're interested in going, now this is, these are going to be uh, smaller groups uh, than, than what you see in, in like the typical big events. Uh, so more customized experiences and, um, if you are interested in learning more about this, obviously feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Baz to Earth, and um, I'm um, I'm going to be uh, Bad Apples. So come and find me. I'll have more information on on their events, and um, I'll be happy to share uh, the exact dates, itineraries, and um, and cost, and all of this information. Yep. Did you just Did want your, the date? Your... Yeah, I. Just Memorial Weekend, right? Yes, June 5th, June 9th. Okay, and that's the corn buzzards down in Palmyra, yeah. Illinois. No. Palmyra, yeah. Illinois. Yep, and the Sibleys are going to that. So, all right. Yeah, so hit G up if you want to mark something off your bucket list. Um, I know I would love to go someday. Um, I know she'll be going for years to come because she's got family there. So as soon as I get a foot better. Exactly, exactly. I, I make those trips anyway for to so. see my family and uh, I love making paramotor adventures out of them. And I like taking friends with me. So um, it's uh, it's always fun when we go as a group and, and, um, and uh, I, you know, just try new locations and there's just so much that Egypt has to offer. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to share this with everyone. Um, which family members are there? Is your parents, is your parents there or other people? Um, uh, your parents uh, my mom is there. And, yeah, my mom is there and my sisters. Pretty much all my closest family members are there. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good reason to go. Yeah, yeah, and they come visit every once in a while, but you know, it's uh, it's nice to go visit them. Can I show you something, something real quick? I want to show you some uh, photos from the hotel that we were at because it was incredible. 
Um, so this is uh, King's Island in, uh, in Luxor. So imagine, imagine this, imagine just, just like walking around this. This is the Nile, as you can see. Um, and you can see that it's an island. <laughs> the rooms were so nice. Um, it was just, it was such an incredible experience, just the, the just, how fancy everything is though we were in five star hotels um all the way um and um it was it was incredible everything was so just so nice everything was all the details were taken care of it was wonderful oh well, good that's nice oh there's so much there is so much more. i'm i'm going through the pictures it's gonna take more than one show <laughs> we can do that I'll probably have, um, I don't know, I'll probably bring all of those pictures to uh, Bad Apples or something so I can, you know, show Yeah, do a slideshow. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I think it would be cool. That would be cool. That is so cool. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. um, anybody want to be a guest in the near future? Walter? How about... Just go outdoors. You want to be a guest on on the show? How about We're taking volunteers. <laughs> John Wayne. Oh, I see. John Wayne's granddaughter is going to college, so he will. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that does she is she the one that does the videos for him? I don't know. Bill H. I think she we is. need Bill H. Could have scuba. Scuba talk about his trike flying. Um, Joe Sibley. <laughs> so anyway, we need some guests. And if you don't want to be a guest and you know somebody that you think might be a good guest or be willing to be a guest, let Here's us know. She's got an idea. She said... Uh, Fingers crossed we need to do a fly-in update show soon. Yes. That's a good idea. Now, uh, when is our next show going to be? Walter says he's boring. So, Well, gee, thank you so much for tonight. Um, I'm going to – did anybody get the – let's see. Let's see what we got here. Um, present. Share screen. We got five entries. You ready? Here we go. You had to type it exactly like that. It's going to be Bill H. I know it. Uh oh, oh, my. oh scuba got it. I was afraid it was going to be Bill H again. <laughs> Well, Scuba's just as bad because now I got to worry about sending it to his old old place. <laughs> oh, he's got a new address. I know. I sent the, apparently the last one to the wrong, the old oh. address. <laughs> Congratulations, Scuba. Yeah. Not sure what we're giving you yet, but we'll see what we can dig up. Oh, oh. Uh, I think we uh, we talked about naming a, a baby flamingo after him. Oh yeah, you gotta name one of those chickens Scuba. Yep. She's frozen. Oh, there she goes. I'm froze. What? Talking about what? You know, baby. name one of those the chicken that's got the hair sticking up the most. You gotta name Scuba. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I had my boot on, I would walk over there and. And get one, but I don't have my boot on. I got a nice pack on. <laughs> You'll have to pick one out. And put we'll it name one on, on Facebook. <laughs> yep, I will. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. And I hope you liked your, your song tonight. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right.
Um, no guests next week. Don't know what we're doing next week yet. So we need some guests. Um, we're having a hard time. I know it. Uh, oh, the what other thing is. Francis, Scuba, when she finds out who I am, I'm out. Who is that? What's that deal? Just go outdoors. Hmm. I don't know. All right, Scuba. You need to tell us who that is, Scuba. We need to talk. Um, the other thing, but girls that we were talking about um, last week, at the end, um, just want to say that we're tossing, and I think it's going to be an idea um, from now on, at least until fall, that we cut back to every other week because you guys are um, flying a lot more now that the weather's better. And I just think that, you know, that way it'll give you time with family and um, just to hang out. So, um, and not rush back and feel like you have to come to hang out with us. So, um, if you guys are okay with that, um, I think the girls and I are going to probably do every other week. Does that sound all right? At least till it starts getting cold again. Um, actually, next week um, we'll we'll continue next week yet, but then after that we'll take a break. And if there's something special coming up, you know, like a fly-in that we're at or um, EAA, um, just look for us. <laughs> John Wayne, oh no, what will I do while I'm waiting for the ambulance when I land? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and it's past Linda's bedtime, Walter says. So, yeah. <laughs> no, she's probably got church and rodeoing to do tonight yep. yet. Yeah, she's got that rodeo stuff. <laughs> So that's the one thing I wanted to talk. Teddy, stop. Ah. So next week we've got a guest, I believe. So yeah. anyway. Yeah, it'll give everybody a chance to fly. What? It'll give everybody a chance to fly. Yeah. Yeah. And just hang out with friends and family. Be nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's just getting harder to find people right now um, due to the weather getting better. So, yeah. so, all right. I love you all, and we'll see you next week for sure. Bye, everybody. Bye.